Okay, I'm Jeff at PJM Suspension, and today we're going to talk about alignment because we get a lot of calls on it. We got a lot of bad alignments, and uh, we want to give you the information so you can possibly do it yourself. Um, uh, it's a lot better uh, to have it aligned the way you want than some alignment guy that you don't even know. And um, so we don't want to depend on them, we want to do it ourselves. So we have a couple of alignment gauges. And we're not going to get high tech, we don't need computers. We just need basic alignment gauge. This alignment gauge is an old alignment gauge, they've been using it for 50 years. Uh, it does a great job. Um, you can also go to eBay, buy a brand new one, this was $115. Uh, I like to save on labor, I like to save on alignment, and I figure I can go ahead and buy tools and equipment for all the money I save with labor, doing it myself, finding out how it's done. Maybe it's a little bit of struggle at first, but uh, you can definitely get there. So, you can do one of two things. You can buy a fancy alignment bar. But I don't really care for that much, but if, if you do a lot of alignments, it might be worth buying. We cut up some uh, some just basic tubing. Uh, you can get it at your steel supply house. They also probably have a lathe. They can face it off for you. Uh, you can get a little fancy and do some fancy stuff if you do a lot of alignments on a particular vehicle. We don't really care. This gauge has to be magnetic snap it on there and we're going to work off the hub. We have our gauge. It's very simple. Put the gauge on the hub. The hub's nice and square and we can check our camber. Now on camber we're, we're going to be working in tenths of one degree and so the camber has to be accurate. Not so much caster but camber we have to have accurate. So for me I, I came up and I like two tenths negative and that's two tenths of a degree it's pretty small so you can set it at zero you can set it at plus one you can set it at minus one remember you have control over it now so you're gonna be able to set it up the way you like it I like two tenths that's where my gauge is everything's great so first thing we want to do after we do our installation this is a standard 07 Chevy this is a four inch uh, front kit. Uh, it's pretty popular for us. Uh, a lot of guys have them. It uh, doesn't matter if you have our kit, if you have somebody else's kit. You can, uh, you can do your own alignments with a $115 gauge. So if they're charging $90 or $95 for an alignment, take that money and go buy a gauge with it. And, uh, and so obviously you see we have a lift, we have turnbuckles. You don't necessarily need it you can do it on a flat cement floor. So uh, I talked to a guy in the army. He said they do it on the floor. They take a couple pieces of aluminum, put some grease in between them, and they got their turnbuckle. Zero, you can go ahead and scribe your 20 degrees because we're gonna need 20 degrees. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, we have some leftover vinyl squares. You can get them anywhere. Put that one down, put a little grease on it, put the other one down, and you guys know what to do. You can mark a center mark on it, you mark a couple 20 degrees on it, and you got a nice turnbuckle that'll work just fine on the, on the ground, um, and, um, uh, and it'll work just like the turnbuckles we're using. Uh, you can buy these turnbuckles, uh, you can still use them on the ground. Uh, you can buy them for a couple hundred, four or five hundred dollars. Um, it's up to you. You can buy inexpensive turnbuckles if you really want to get into it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So we have our four inch front kit installed. Um, and the first thing we need to do is just simply eyeball this thing uh, to get it somewhat in alignment. So we have our camera. We're not going to worry about casting right now. We're going to go ahead and adjust our cams, your kit will come with cam locks. 
from 99 Chevy to 2016, we use these cam locks. And the reason we do this is so we don't have to tighten it so tight that we ruin the bushings, um, we bend the receivers, uh, we don't want to do any of that stuff. So at the end of the alignment, we're going to very carefully take the old alignment eccentric off, slide our cam locks on. At 35, 40 pounds, this is going to keep you in alignment forever. Unless you crash the truck, you're not going to have an alignment problem. So we've obviously we've already done this. We're not going to waste your time with us fiddling around, uh, eyeballing this thing in. But you're not going to eyeball your camber in. You're not going to worry about your caster right now. You're going to eyeball your toe in. Okay, so what we need to do is just break the jam nut, go ahead and back it off a little bit. And we're going to be able to take our wrench and adjust the toe. And we're just going to eyeball this in. We're going to look down the tire and get it as close as we can. You might want to break this jam nut loose while you're doing the installation. It'll save you a little bit of time. When the, when the truck's brand new or it's never been uh, uh, disassembled, uh, that nut's pretty tight and it's kind of nice to do it without the tire. Uh, go ahead and think about that while you're installing the kit. Okay, so we've eyeballed our, our wheel. We've got the camber as straight as we can. We've got the toe as straight as we can. We've secured the steering wheel. And so now we want to talk about caster for a second. Caster doesn't have to be as accurate as camber does. Camber is going to be all about tire wear. And uh, if you don't want to spend time at the tire store, and big brighten them big checks. We want to make sure our camber is as close to zero as possible. Of course, now you have control of your alignment. So like me, I like my uh, camber a little bit on the negative side. You cannot go 0.5 negative. Your tires will get, give you about seven or 8,000 miles. Then you're done, you're back down at the tire store. So, so we want that camber to be very accurate. We want it the same on both sides. Now, caster doesn't need to be that accurate. Caster can be within one degree on each side. So if one side's four and one side's five, you're done. Lock it up. You're good. So what caster is? Straight up and down. Let's call that zero caster. And, it, and of course, just like a bicycle and the handlebars, okay, you can't really ever have a negative caster. Your caster is always positive. It can't be. So zero would be straight up and down. Your, your truck, your car would drive terrible. Now the more we come back here, the more caster we're adding to it. Original equipment manufacturers always have low caster settings. One and a half degrees, two degrees of caster. It's awful. We don't like that. And I don't like it. So I like four degrees. I even like five degrees. Um, if you get too high in your caster, your wheels will lost, squeal when you're going around a, a, a U-turn, things like that. So we don't want to go too high on it. But for me, five degrees is fine. Uh, four degrees is good. Four and a half degrees, as long as one's four and a half, one's five, doesn't matter. You're fine. So what we're doing from the upper ball joint to the lower ball joint, that's your caster setting. Your upper ball joint always sits aft of the lower ball joint. So that's what we're trying to achieve. We just need a way to measure it. So we come back to our gauge we picked up for $115. Uh, Going to save you a ton. Um, you can do an alignment in 35, 45 minutes. And, um, and you can tell the difference between the changes you make on, on your alignment. So this gauge comes with instructions. This is really, really simple. Uh, camber is very simple to do. We're going to take our arrow from zero. We're going to put it on 20 degrees. And we're going to pull this wheel over, put it on 20 degrees. Put our gauge on it. It says caster right on our gauge. We're going to take, we're going to just adjust that to zero. take the tire, we're going to pull it back 20 degrees the opposite way. And, a, and, a, and you can see the caster, you actually get 
negative one side, positive on the other side. We're gonna take our gauge. We're not gonna do any adjustment. We're just gonna take a look at it and see where your caster is. This happens to be five and a half degrees cast. I like it. You can lower the caster setting. Okay, so now I wanna show you something that you don't wanna see at the alignment shop. You don't wanna do it unless you think about it and you do something about it, which your alignment shop, probably not. I get calls on this all the time. So we're gonna to wanna to get in here with our socket combination wrench. We're gonna pull the thing way over, try to get into it here without disturbing the truck. So, so the truck is completely settled right now and this is fairly hard to get into, I, I, I admit it. So your alignment guy is going, that's hard to get into. So what he's going to do, he's going to take whatever he has, bottle jack, jack, whatever it is, and he's going to do this to it. So that's easy. To get, now it's a lot easier to get into, uh, make his adjustments. Okay. See what happened to our wheel. Our, our, our wheel is cambered out now. Okay. So he's done that. He's made his adjustments. And whether he has a computer, whatever they're doing it with, the computer is even worse because it's going to tell them they're good. So he's jacked up. He's made his adjustments on it. He's going to come back, he's going to check it, and oh great, we're right on zero, right where we want to be. The only thing is, it's made a half a degree difference uh, in the alignment. So now my alignment gauge is, is it's off the chart actually, but it's, it's, uh, it's 0.5 positive because now I'm getting a real reading on that. If I'm fooling myself, I have my camber gauge and it says I'm zero, we're now we're a ha half a degree off. Remember, in, in camber, we can't be a half a degree off. So what's going to happen is this truck's going to roll off the lift, it's going to settle down, you're going to put the brakes on, and now you're going to be a half degree negative. Remember, your, your tire shop's going to see in seven or 8,000 miles. Your tire, the inside of your tire is going to be gone. So, how can we avoid that? Um, you're probably not going to be able to talk your alignment guy out of it. He knows everything, and um, and that's a lot of times that's the way it is. So, what would happen if when we adjusted this, we adjusted it at a half degree positive? So now we're sitting here. We put the gauge on. We're a half a degree positive. So now we know we're going to lose a half a degree when we pull it off the rack. It's going to be right on zero. That's great. Remember, caster isn't that sensitive. So we can come back, go 20 degrees, put our caster gauge on. It made a little tiny bit of difference. Not that much. Put it back over 20 degrees. took our measurement, and I'm, I'm almost the same. Maybe I'm a half a degree difference. Uh, remember, caster isn't as important as camber because camber is going to send you down by a new set of tires. Caster, the more caster you have, I think, up to a point, uh, your truck drives straighter, uh, the road feel is better. Uh, when you go around a uh, 90 degree turn, that steering wheel should want to come back to zero by itself. You just let go of the steering wheel, it should come right back to center or attempt to come back to center. So, so that's, that's with a higher caster setting above four degrees, that's what it's going to do and it's going to drive like a sport truck. So now we've got our caster and camber done. And uh, we have this at 2.2 degrees negative, that's two tenths of a degree negative, 
and we have it at five and a half degrees caster. I happen to like that. You might want it at four and a half degrees caster. You can set it up anytime you want with a little bubble gauge, a piece of steel um, from eBay. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, you can do this on the floor just as easy. Uh, uh, now we'll go on to tow. Uh, what I like to do, uh, because I have the tool, and you can you can take some pillows or you know or make your own or like we said, you you're you're ninety ninety five dollars in in the black right now. So I like to lock the steering wheel down before I start doing tow because it could move, it can knock your steering wheel off. We want a straight wheel because we're going to have a straight truck and we want the wheel to be perfectly centered that's 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 a good alignment and we'll talk about that more when we get to the final adjustment okay so now we're going to start on the toe i'm going to take and jack the control arm up just so i can spin the wheel Okay, so now we can spin the wheel. We're going to take some white spray paint. We're going to go ahead and spray paint a line right around the tire. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to scribe a line on our tire. I have a little purpose built scribe for this. You can figure it out, you can make something. Uh, it's, it's, pretty simple task and we're just going to go ahead and spin the tire and we're going to go ahead and scribe a line around it. So now we have a line around it, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, we're going to spin the tire and paint our line. This isn't a tattoo, it's going to come off your first test drive, it's all going to be gone, don't worry. Now we're going to take our scribe. And again, figure something out. You can take an all, you can do whatever. You just need a little line around the tire. We're going to measure in between these two lines. So we got our line. I'm going to go ahead and put it back down again. Okay, so this is our one man tape measure. It does exactly the same thing your tape measure does, but I don't need anybody on the, on the other side of it to hold the tape measure. So we're going to take this little tool and we're going to check our toe. And let's go. This is very simple. We're going to take one side and we're going to set it right on our line we scroll. Do that with a tape measure. We're going to take the other side. And we're going to move it right on that line that we described on. And now we have a measurement. So now, we can take and carefully remove this. So now we're at the back of the wheel. This has been aligned, and you can see we're right on the money. Both the front and the wheel are exactly the same. Now you may not want them exactly the same. You may want a little toe in, which is pretty common. So you might want to adjust the front a sixteenth of an inch less than the back. Uh, it's stuff that you can fool around with if you want to, now that you see how simple it is. And. Um, and basically, camber, caster, tow, that's all you need on a pickup truck. Um, uh, this thing will drive straight, uh, barring you don't have a bad part, barring you didn't do something wrong with the installation. Uh, most of these installations are pretty straightforward, uh, but as long as you get these three things right, your truck's gonna drive nice, and your wheels, your tires aren't gonna wear. And, uh, 
especially if you have a lot more expensive set of wheels and tires than this, you're not going to get anywhere. You know you're not going to get anywhere because you did it yourself. Um, rather than take it to an alignment guy, you don't even know. And you don't know if he cares about it or not. Uh, but when your truck doesn't drive quite right, you know he doesn't care about it. And we get a lot, a lot of calls on this. Wrong caster. Uh, the guy jacked it up. And, uh, and now it's a half degree negative and it just wore your tire here uh, in a matter of a few thousand miles. And you're, you're riding on steel right there. And in six or seven, eight thousand miles, uh, you're done. You need a new set of tires. So, um, so you take the two sets of tires, uh, you take your um, initial cost of the alignment, and you could buy all this stuff. And you can have it. And if you want to see what the your truck drives like with, uh, you know, an initial setup with a little positive camber, maybe you got a lot of weight you're carrying in your truck. Maybe it's a work truck. You want to set it positive because you know that when you weight your truck, the more the truck is lowered, the more negative camber you're going to have. And so you can fool around with all these things, educate yourself a little bit on it, and you're always going to have your truck in alignment and you know it's going to be alignment because you did it yourself and that's and um, that's the secret to um, uh, to really make sure this stuff runs right and um, uh, so now I guess we can um, take this thing out and see how we did okay here we are starting off on our test drive see how we did and how this thing drives we didn't have to use any fancy computers we use some common sense and some bubble gauges and now let's see how she drives. Okay, here we go for 90 degree test. We'll let that steering wheel go and she wants to come right back to center. That's what your caster does for you. When we push into this lane change, we can feel this, we can feel the truck. That's what the higher caster does for you. So right now, we're at 0.2 negative camber. Same on both sides. We don't want to go ever, ever go past 0.2 negative. If you want it zero, that's great too. Adjust it to zero, it'll still drive fine. And we got a lot of caster in it. We got five degrees of caster in this thing. But you can see that this thing is is driving really straight. And um, and of course that's what we want. And the reason I have five degrees caster in it is because I want five degrees caster in it. I don't want the alignment guy at the big box store to decide how much caster I want. I'll decide how much caster I want. And and that's why we're handing there's a pretty heavy crown on this road and you can still see it's still driving nice and straight so our steering wheel is pretty straight that could be adjusted um, whatever ways your steering wheels off turn your tie rods the same way and it'll straighten the steering wheel out since you're already done your toe and you know the wheels are parallel with each other all you got to do is count the amount of turns that you turn each tie rod, turn them both in the same direction. So if your steering wheel's off like this, turn your tie rods like that, same direction, and it'll pull your steering wheel back straight again. Usually you have to do that. Okay, so we're going to test drive this thing pretty good because it's working so well. Again, this is a 4.6 kit, uh, 07 Chevy, same kit all the way up to your 16. Um, you can see that even not so nice of roads um, This is a super nice riding kit the alignments dead on the money uh, Is what we want. We're not going to end up at the tire store and um, And we're we're not gonna have to fight the thing on the freeway and um, And we did the thing with a, uh, a minimum amount of tools uh, in equipment and uh, if you go ahead and buy it now you own the equipment uh, you traded it for one bad alignment and uh, and now you have one good alignment and the tools are still yours so uh, I recommend this doesn't cost that much to give it a try uh, 
and uh, I'd go ahead and try it. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at what we did. Um, we used our one-man tape measure, which you could certainly just use a tape measure. Can of white spray paint. We have a scribe that you could buy one or you could make one out of, you know, some wood and, you know, whatever. You guys are smart. You know how to do it. 21 millimeter socket, combination wrench. We went to our metal house, got a piece of tubing, found somebody with a lathe to face it off on each end so it's nice and square. We need it nice and square. And we got our little gauge that we bought from eBay for a little over $100. So you're in the alignment business. And you can do a good alignment. You know, you take the time. Uh, remember some of the stuff we uh, talked about. If you do have to jack the truck up, you're going to have a half a degree error positive. So we need to zero now is going to be plus a half a degree, five tenths. Okay, so we have to do that. So when we pull it off the lift, it's going to be on zero. And since you have your own stuff, um, even if you're using your vinyl squares, uh, pull it back up and just check it. It's going to be right. It's going to be very close. If your alignment guy does that, and he's convinced that this is on zero, you pull it off, you go off into the sunset, you're a half the gray off. Uh, Mr. Goodyear is going to say, thank you very much. I love to replace tires at 7,000 miles. And, um, of course, we don't want to do that. So even if you have, are having a line, make sure, you see that guy jack it up, He's not measuring it right, especially if he's, if he's using a computer alignment. Um, he probably has less, less knowledge than you do now. So just keep your eyes open. Don't go and leave your truck someplace. Get it aligned, come back. They give you a nice read, readout with green and red on it. Looks great and stuff. You drive your truck off, because you're not going to know this until at least a couple thousand, three thousand miles. With, uh, with negative camber, your truck usually drives better, um, straighter. But believe me, um, you're going to be back at the tire store in no time. So I, uh, I hope this was helpful, and we'll see you next time.